Second part to the software package is the remote control utility. You need to have a little bit of thought prior to setting this up about how you're going to connect to the internet. For example, do you use static IP addressing or dynamic IP addressing? And if you use dynamic IP addressing, are people going to be using your radio on a regular basis? If so, you might want to use a dynamic DNS service like no IP. That's exactly how I set ours up here. Um, the other thing is you also need to open some ports in your router. And you need to have a pass-through for TCP ports on 5001, 5002 and 5003. That might sound quite easy, but you need to have a little bit of thought prior to which PC you're going to direct this to and set that up. So if you haven't done that first, you need to go away and read up on how you're going to pass that through and set that up. Okay, so now we're going to look at the second part of the software, which is the remote utility. Remote utility um, handles a number of functions. One it handles the USB audio over the internet or LAN, and the second part is that it allows um, the CIV, CIV data uh, to be handled over the internet via a virtual um, USB uh, port. So, um, again... Just make sure you've set up the drivers, you've actually uh, connected. And uh, one of the things that I would like to do is to actually test the connection using remote control. If you can connect via the panel, then you'll have no problem with the remote utility here. So I now run this up. Okay, don't worry about this little message about the remote utility. It's because the ICOM 7600 is not connected. Okay, um, first part of this is actually setting up the network settings. Uh, you need to set up a PC name and um, you need to set up uh, basically the type of interconnect internet connection you're using. And three ports that are used for uh, carrying control data, the serial data and the audio ports across the internet. 5001, 5002, 5003, all on UDP. Um, a quick word about those. You need to have those port forwards set up in your um, broadband DSL router um, and also in the Windows firewall. You need to make sure that if you use Windows firewall that those ports are enabled and the application is enabled as being allowed. Um, so one of the other things that if you're using this on the internet and allowing others to use your software um, and your radios, uh, you need to set up some kind of dynamic DNS, as you'll be forever telling people the IP address. Um, we actually use um, uh, no IP uh, and set up a no IP port there um, and set it up so that it, using the little uh, desktop piece of software, um, allow it to um, use... Um, the IP address of the machine and update the um, DNS um, so you could actually create a DNS um, so uh, your call sign for example at noip.org um, now once you know those ports are set up and you know that the DNS is being set up and everything um, you'll be able to tell the other user um, the connection details um, that they're going to aim for. Um, so basically the idea is that they will know the IP or they will know the DNS name um, to connect to using these three um, ports. And the next thing that they, the remote user will need is a username and password. And you set that up here in the server settings. So you can see here there's a number of uh, uh, usernames set up already I've already set this test user up uh, what you need to do is just add the username and a password and um, then you can basically um, allow with their own administrator an admin uh, really the only functionality they get extra is to be able to disconnect users <laughs> um, and kick them off so um, you might not want to give everybody that um, feature um, and then you just basically click add Taking them away is very easy. Just highlight them and click remove again. Um, the next thing once you've done that is to set up the radios. And um, it's quite easy to add a radio. Um, so um, if I click the add 
um, function here. Um, basically what it will do is come up with a radio name which you click in um, and type the radio name that you want to display as CIV data, the address of the radio CIV, uh, the board rate. Um, this setting here is very important. If you click public and then access user permissions you then actually have to allow um, a particular user um, access to that PC so you can then click um, users and let them have permission. Um, network transmission quality is pretty much basically um, what is the maximum um, sample rates that you will use and the number of channels and codecs that you will actually use um, for audio across the um, across the internet. Um, I would recommend you keep this fairly low um, to keep the transmission um, bit rate down um, so that you can actually have more of a quality in, in just one channel than trying to do lots and lots of um, high, high quality audio and having dropouts. Um, common audio port settings here, COM port is the CIV port and the audio input devices. You don't need to worry too much about this one. Um, basically, if you just put microphone and um, speakers, it will be fine. Um, it will display um, the, the auto-detected device anyway. And again, the maximum uh, transmission rate there. Okay. So that's how you add a radio. I'll um, I'll cancel that because I don't want to. I've already got one uh, set up here. And if I look in my properties here, you'll see that I've got the radio set up. And that's how it looks when it's all set up. So uh, now this is actually uh, running. Um, this is actually set up as a um, server right now. And it's actually waiting for somebody to actually connect. Um, you can actually connect locally. Um, uh, if I was to connect this button here, it would actually connect um, directly. You can actually see um, and hear the radio um, operating. Um, and again, there you're just uh, setting up the uh, uh, local devices that you would actually see and connect to. Okay, so this is now set up. Um, so the things to remember are um, DNS and or IP address that you, you're going to use across the internet. Port forwarding, that's very important. Um, COM ports and CIV ports being able to connect to the radio before you run the remote utility. Passwords and usernames and the server name for the machine. And um, if you set all those up, um, actually the first time you set it up it'll probably take you quite a while. Um, but once you've done it once you'll find out it's very easy. The manual is very good, I suggest you print that off. That's quite a comprehensive manual and uh, will uh, allow you to um, troubleshoot um, the kind of connectivity issues. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this uh, running on this machine and uh, what I'll do is I'll move over to another machine and um, then we'll uh, do a remote connection and you can see what it looks like and also we'll have a look at um, connecting to um, another machine across the internet so the first one will be on the LAN which is the IC9100 here the second one will be um, an IC7000 that's actually across the internet too okay let's get on and uh, move on to the third part of the video using the remote operation <laughs> 